The Irish Times reported this morning that according to a senior official involved in the uh, fiscal treaty negotiations, the focus of the Irish negotiators was to ensure that at all costs, the Irish people would have no say on the fiscal treaty by way of a referendum, and that the other European governments were also keen to ensure that none of the peoples of Europe would be invited to decide. Lucinda, did Irish officials in negotiation of the fiscal treaty concern themselves with of so framing the treaty in a way that would avoid a referendum here? No. Um, the one thing that I would say is that in relation to the, the so-called debt break, um, it was always our position that we wanted to legislate for that and we did not want to enshrine it in, in the Constitution. Um, it has been in the um, legislative programme since the government was formed and it's in the programme for government that we would introduce this debt break um, by way of legislation. And, um, and that certainly was our position during the negotiations. That's the only aspect, I suppose, that, that would concern the prospect of a referendum or not. But, um, but it certainly um, is not the sum total of the treaty. And um, at no stage, and I was involved um, in the negotiations, uh, and as you mentioned, I was, I was at the summit on Monday as well, um, and at no stage did we discuss with officials um, the, the prospect of avoiding a referendum or negotiating the treaty in order to try to avoid a referendum. So no, that's not So the, the story in the Irish Times this morning is untrue? Well, I, I mean, I can't, I can't say that uh, an official didn't speak to a reporter yeah, in the Irish Times so and, 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 and make that allegation. What, what, what the official is quoted as saying is, is certainly untrue. Right. Why didn't Andy Kenny say that in the doll today? I, I don't know. Um, I, I think, um, I, I mean, obviously... Why did he avoid a, the question? Well, I don't know that he avoided the question, but there was, obviously, again? there was obviously a, a lengthy exchange. But, there, there um, wasn't a lengthy exchange. Was, she was, he was asked the question, uh, <coughs> was the official telling the truth? was the last question that Mary Lou asked him. And now, why didn't he say no? If, well, he if, said, if it was the case that, as you're saying, the official wasn't telling the truth, why didn't he just uh, say, no, it wasn't the truth? In fairness, he said that he didn't want to engage in speculation about an unnamed source he, he, in, a, in, an, in, an, in, an, in an article. In an article. Diversion, well, you rubbish. know, I mean, that, that's a legitimate position why to hold. Why didn't he say simply... I can't, I can't tell you why Enda Kenny said or said Is it believable that if it was the case that they, there was no concern on the part of Irish negotiators in, on the fiscal treaty to avoid a referendum here, is it, is it believable that he wouldn't have said that and answered that question? Well, I mean, the Taoiseach set out in the Dáil today his view that he did not want to engage in a speculative discussion about somebody who was not named. This is there rubbish. Was no, he was asked the simple question. I'm just telling you, he that, was is asked my, the question. that is my assessment of the Taoiseach's, the Taoiseach's intervention in the Listen, Dáil this He morning. was asked the question, was the official telling the truth? You say the official wasn't telling the truth. Why, if that is so, didn't Enda Kenny say the official wasn't telling because the truth? Because, as Enda Kenny said, he because felt... Because he's a blatherer, is that what no, you're saying? No, because he felt huh? that he, he did not want to address um, an issue on leaders' questions this morning about an article with an unnamed source, and that's his prerogative. I'm, sim I'm telling you um, the facts, uh, and Enda Kenny set out his position before the Dáil this morning. Now, we have said very clearly, the Taoiseach has said it in the Dáil, I have said it uh, on numerous occasions in recent weeks, that if the Attorney-General recommends that there is a need for a referendum in order to, ch to change the comp Constitution please, please to so make this treaty compatible with that it. Ad but that's, over the well, last I'm sorry if it bores you, Vincent, it but does, this is yeah. the way in which uh, our, our democracy since the foundation of the state has operated. There has never been um, a referendum to satisfy um, a, a clamour from the opposition. There has only ever been a referendum. There would never have been a referendum can I say, but there for Raymond there, Crotty, a citizen I, had to I, go to can I courts to insist on that. May I speak? Yeah. The, the, the fact is that there, there has never been a necessity or a requirement to hold a referendum in this country to test public opinion. There has only ever been a referendum to amend the Constitution because it was required. Uh, we held a referendum, for example, in 1972 uh, when Ireland sought to join the European communities. At that point, Sinn Féin was opposed to European membership. Sinn Féin has opposed every single referendum ever since. Sinn Féin has opposed Ireland's engagement with Europe at every stage. So we're not surprised about that. So that's the way it is. We know where you stand. But the reality is that the, the government 
Parliament and the Taoiseach have been explicit and very, very clear that if the Attorney General, uh, fulfilling her constitutional role, recommends that, that the government should hold a referendum, then we will hold a referendum. And if not, if she deems the treaty to be compatible with um, the existing constitutional provisions that we have in Bunrock to Naharan, then we will not hold a referendum. Simple as that, very straightforward, Steve. very clear. I'd like to focus on this issue of whether the negotiators focused on ensuring the Irish people would have no say on this treaty. And I, frankly, I find it unbelievable that if, if what was reported in the Irish Times was untrue today, that Andy Kenny wouldn't have said that. that mm. it, it, he is not that airheaded that he, would, that he wouldn't have said, no, the story is untrue. Well, I'm telling you, so either I'm a liar or... Or and can he is that hair No, no, is no. That, I, no, no the I other? Say he, 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 he very clearly has the prerogative and... You know, it's he, a prerogative to be airheaded. No, Vincent, he has the prerogative no. to s set out in the doll that he doesn't wish to engage but with anonymous sources... But he was asked sources a simple question. In, was in what the official... Was the official telling the truth? The official who spoke to the Irish Times, who said that yes, they, the Irish negotiators were involved in trying to ensure that there would be no referendum here, that the, the terms of this treaty were such as not to require a referendum here. Now, he was, he was asked, was this true or not? And he waffled. No, but he, I mean, he has answered questions since last Monday. He answered questions in the Dáil yesterday. He, was asked, he, he couldn't he, have he, answered questions on the Irish Times story uh, that no, was no, published today until today. Is it, about, is it simply about the Irish Times story? Or That's is it about right. The, I'm is, asking, it, is it about the government's position in relation to negotiations? No, no, we've heard the whole bloody thing again and again about the, if, the, if we ask the Attorney General or no, whatever no, the Attorney General... No, I'm not talking about that. Never, 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 just on the Irish Times question, is the story true or isn't it true? If it isn't true, as you say, why didn't he say it? I see because Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin and the technical group are jockeying around dying to have a referendum so that they can uh, compete against each other and try to yeah. try to raise listen, their, listen, their, listen, their... Were you their involved sort of in, in uh, the discussions and negotiations concerning the Lisbon Treaty and to, to determine the Irish, what the Irish position should be on that? No. As Minister for European Affairs... With the Lisbon Treaty? Well, no. Sorry, the Fiscal Treaty. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And in the course of those discussions on the uh, drafts of the uh, fiscal treaty, did you uh, seek legal advice on whether a, a constitutional amendment, a, a, a referendum would be required no. or not? You never, at any no. stage, the Attorney General was never asked with regard to any of the drafts whether a referendum would no. be required or not. No. Now, now I, I would say that the, the, um, the main legal advisor from the Department of Foreign Affairs and some legal officials from the AG's office would have been involved at various stages. Ah. So the uh, course, Attorney General's as, office would as, be. As happens with every single element, uh, every yeah. single and international did they, did, treaty were, were legal, we would, were, were, we were opinions make. drafted, legal opinions drafted, on the, 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 uh, on the first, the, the initial draft of the, this treaty, was there a legal opinion uh, written that uh, advised whether a constitutional no. amendment was uh, never, no, 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 no legal no. advice no. was ever and, drafted and on. the government wasn't seeking legal, legal advice as to whether a referendum would be required or not. Uh, that it, it took no legal advice no. on the f uh, on the wording of the Lisbon uh, of this fiscal treaty uh, with regard to whether a constitutional amendment would be required no. or not. Never did. No. God, I find that amazing. Do you? Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, since nobody in Europe would be able to, or hardly anybody in Europe would be able to determine what the Irish constitutional position is, you'd surely have expected sure. somebody... Do you know, to be honest, Vincent, I don't think that people in the other 24 uh, member states that were, well, was to be 26, um, who were in engaged in their own uh, assessment and their own revisions and redraftings of this treaty, I don't think they were particularly concerning themselves about whether we would have a referendum or not. Well, that, was a just the point, a number, that was just the point I made. A number, a number. Was, did you not, not notice? That was exactly the point I made. That it is not believable that anybody in Europe was focused on whether we would require a referendum or not. So what's that your point? Is, my point is that therefore, if the Irish side, or, or, nor would they have the expertise to do so, but the Irish, the uh, Irish lords would have the expertise to determine whether a constitutional requirement, given certain wordings in the in the treaty. But as I and said to I, you, I don't think it's believable you, that, that such advice wasn't offered but, on each draft. But as I said, to you, the Irish government did not set out to avoid a referendum, so therefore that was not the crux of well, the... Well, of what, the was Andy, what, what was Eamon Gilmore saying at the uh, European Affairs uh, Committee uh, uh, Saturday, Friday week last that they were? No, he didn't say that. Uh, oh, he did. 
Uh, Andy Kenny said in the door last Tuesday that the government had never asked for a debt write-down. Now, th this is staggering. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you understand that the Fine Gael Manifesto didn't say did, that they, the, the thrust of the manifesto wasn't we were going to seek, try to renegotiate well, the government the, did seek a debt write-down because, uh, as you know, Michael Noonan... Why, why, why did Andy Kenny say they didn't? And he repeated it today, by the way. In the but, 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 I don't know. Ma Ma it, Michael, Michael Noonan met with the president, the, the former president of the ECB, um, met with the IMF, and there were certainly discussions about debt right down. And certainly. why did Andy Kenny say that there wasn't? Well, I, I, I don't know, but there were. Like, like, like who? The, does Andy Kenny, is part there part Andy Kenny head of this government? Or does he know what's going no, on? No, but we have, I mean, what we have. Let's, let's, have a look. let's have a look at the clip of Andy Kenny saying this. This, this government have not looked for any write-off and is not looking for a write-off. We have paid our way and will pay our way. i tell you what, is, is he this more blather on part of Andy, is it? No, um, the, the fact is that when the government well, is was... Is it what he said true? When the government was formed, um, it was very clear that we were going to seek a debt write-down, which we did through the Minister for Finance. Um, and it proved quite clearly to not be possible. Yeah, all right, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I understand that. But Andy Kenny said they never did. Now, is he telling the truth? Well, we certainly, we certainly are not talking about debt write-down now. He said they never sought a debt write-down. Do you want to hear it again? Uh, let's play it again. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's. Can we do that? Can we, can we play this again? This, this government have not looked for any write-off and is not looking for a write-off. We have paid our way and will pay our way. What we are looking for and what the minister has been very careful... Hey, what? Is he telling the truth or isn't I he? Think, I think... I mean, I can only surmise, but I think w w what, what is clearly meant is that... What is clearly meant? You, uh, well, is, you wouldn't is, say, I'm only surmising. You can't say what is clearly meant if you're only surmising. Well, I, I think what is meant what? is that um, at no point did we consider a unilateral default. He didn't say that. Um, well, uh, that's just my does, interpretation, OK? Does Andy know? Were you right about Andy when you vo tried to get rid of him a year and a half ago as teacher, uh, as a leader of Finnegan? Well, that, you're right that this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I think he's doing an excellent job. And uh, yeah, you have to say that no, no, I don't. Uh, no, I don't have to say that. What I would say, Vin Vincent, is that, you know, this, this week last year the general election was called and this country was on its knees. There was absolutely no now it's uh, on his back there was no there was no there was absolutely no confidence no i mean you can you can joke about it but i'm not joking but, but about it we it's have, not a joke but we have made we have made very serious um strides in terms of improving the position of this country we've returned to positive growth which you may have noticed um uh, when did we return to positive growth? in 2011 uh, and uh, uh, how do they know that since the we don't know the growth figures uh, oh, for, oh. the growth or the contraction figures for the last fourth Quarter. Because it's assessed and analysed at but, all stages by the Department of know. Finance and the SRI. This is, we know. We, we know, don't know. We, we have know, to wait for know, the CSO to tell we us. Know, we know how our. Anyway, go on. We go know on. how our this, exports this is have more been going. of the old sing song stuff. Go on. Why is it a sing song, Vincent? It is it's because just that you want to, you want to literally wallow in doom and gloom every night. I don't this want program. to wallow. Don't want to hear no, I don't. Any of the I, I want to wallow in the truth. Okay, well, we so want to know what's going well, on. That's a good and uh, point. you, so, so we you started want, this discussion so the, with Andy Kenny uh, being asked a straight question so the today. Truth, what the official? So the, was the official telling the truth? The truth how, and he waffled for four or five minutes. And you say the answer is simply no. The official wasn't telling the truth. Then we, you've said, oh yes, truth, we did ask for a de death right down, and we show Andy Kenny saying we didn't ask for a death right down. The truth about the progress that this country has been making, whether you like it or not, is something that you seem to be totally disinterested in, which is a pity. Because there is, there is some good news. And there certainly is good news in terms of foreign direct investment in this country. There certainly is some, some very small but yet significant improvement in the unemployment figures. And yes... And the, country, on the elephant, with regard to the elephant, namely the debt, here they're saying that contrary to all the promises made in the election campaign, yeah. here's the leader of your party, the teacher of this country, saying we never asked for a, de a debt write down. It's amazing, we, isn't it? Just amazing. But what we have done is we have achieved, firstly, um, si significant uh, private sector involvement in the banks uh, to the tune of about 7 billion euro, which is not to be sniffed at. We have reduced the interest rate 
Um, you haven't reduced the interest rate. We have, Greek, actually. You, you got a reduction in the interest rate from the spillover from the Greek bailout. Were you what? there, Vincent? Well, actually... Were you, in, were you at that meeting? In, in were you at that meeting? Yes, I was, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah in the, in the yeah. week, in the week so. that that was, that was uh, given, and we also received an, an elongation of the terms of the loans as well. Enda yeah. Kenny said in the doll that he wasn't looking for a lengthening of the terms of the loans, and then it was announced then in Brussels, and he came out with yourself claiming the credit for it. He actually said he wasn't looking for it. He said he wasn't looking for it, so you can and, get that clip too and, and find it. Why wasn't the unsustainability of the Irish banking, private banking debt on the agenda of the European summit? Because work is ongoing um, in that regard. The Taoiseach raised it at the summit in December um, and subsequently through our discussions with the Troika um, there has been a group set up to look at ways in which we can um, tackle um, the sustainability of our debt, uh, specifically looking at, for example, the issue of the Anglo promissory notes, but potentially other um, so avenues What are we as looking well. in respect of the Anglo promissory uh, notes? Uh, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for um, better terms, um, a reduced interest rate potentially, um, and possibly um, a deferral or But we're not looking for a right, a right down. Uh, no, we're not. Right. Isn't there a huge problem with regard to that? And that is, if all this bank debt remains in our books, <coughs> then we are, we are, we, we, the effort to get the overall debt back to 60% or below of GDP is going to be utterly uh, devastating for this society and this economy. Well, that, and if you leave the bank, the bank debt on the books, it's going to completely screw us. No, well, look, I mean, that, you can certainly look at it that way. But, I mean, you, can, you yeah. have to look at, look at our experience in the past. And, um, for example, um, in 1991, our debt was um, 36 billion. And by 2000, it was 40 billion. And do you know how but that in, occurred? Can I finish my point? Can I finish my point? Right. But in 1991, it was 95% debt to GDP ratio. Um, in 2000, it was something like 35%. So it has dropped dramatically because the economy was growing. And that's where our focus is going to be. We're going to make our debt more sustainable by trying to reduce the, the, the terms of repayment. And we're going to have to grow our economy. It's, it's, it's really fact. scary hearing uh, Fine Gael people say that. Uh, that uh, in, in the, in the, in the the 1990s, from the middle of the 1990s, um, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Irish economy began to boom at an enormous rate. And also the world economy was doing really well. The chances of this economy booming at anything like the rate that happened then is just well, if, I mean, if, nobody if, in the world. If we adopt that attitude and we retreat into the trenches, you're quite right. But I actually happen to believe that we can do a huge amount, not just in Ireland, but in you the European Union. You think that we can achieve in the next One 10 example, years, Vincent. One you example. You think we can achieve in the next 10 years the kind of growth rates we had in the 90s into the noughties? One, one example, Vincent, um, for just one simple example, is that if, if, if the US and the EU were to complete a free trade agreement, which has been under discussion for about 20 years but has never happened, if we were actually to see that it is in our mutual interest to, to actually drive that forward now, seal a deal uh, and, and eliminate tariffs uh, between the EU and the US, you could potentially generate um, about uh, 200 billion uh, euros very, very easily within a period of about three to four years. Vincent, can um, I, can I that's just, just try, one example. Within the European Union, uh, by, by, by completing the single market, by implementing the services directive, by doing all of the things that we have Vincent, talked I, about doing I, but we haven't done, I we could it. make the Euro European Union far more competitive and we could create literally millions of jobs Go for on. Irish millions, people. Millions yes, of jobs literally. for Irish people. Yeah. And where do we get them? Right. Millions of jobs for Irish people. Well, where do you think we you're going to get We don't have millions of jobs for Irish people. Where do you think you're going to get We don't have millions of jobs where do you think jobs for Irish How do you think jobs are created? We don't have millions of Irish people jobs are created by? How do you think jobs are created? By supporting innovation, by driving growth, and by creating competitive conditions. We're going to create millions of jobs for Irish people. 